Coming up on today's show, Steffi's back in our quick cook kitchen showing you how to make a butternut squash crumble bar. Kath's down on the allotment preparing her pot for the winter months. And things are heating up in the shed as we prepare a winter vegetable curry with special guest Taylor Paisley French. Welcome to Dig for Dinner where we take you from dirt to dish. This week we have a couple of fantastic recipes full of delicious veg that still thrives with the onset of the cold winter months. Today in the studio we will be working with four homegrown winter vegetables, broccoli, potato, leeks and carrots, along with a few of our favourite veg. In both our recipes we will be using butternut squash. It's treated as a vegetable but is in fact a fruit and as a member of the pumpkin family you can roast puree or even mash the squash to suit your dish. Although it's typically used for soups and casseroles today, Steffi will show you how to do something a little bit different. When it comes to baking, people don't instantly think to add most garden produce as an ingredient. However, today's special treat is sure to excite your taste buds. Today in the Quick Cooks kitchen, we're going to be making butternut squash crumble bars. Now, you could use more generic ingredients like apples, blackberries or rhubarb, but today we're going to be doing something a bit different and using butternut squash instead. Now, this is the time of year that you might be harvesting and growing butternut squash at home. It's rich in vitamin A, which is perfect for boosting your immune system and fighting off those winter colds. There are three stages to this quick cook. The first is preparing your puree. You're going to want to preheat your oven to 180 degrees C. Then take your butternut squash and after cutting off the top, you're going to cut it in half down the middle lengthways. Okay. Then you're going to take a spoon and scoop out the gooey insides. Be sure to get all the seeds when you're doing this. Then you take half of your butternut squash and place it on a baking tray on some foil. Now, before we put this in the oven, we're going to pierce the skin a few times with a sharp knife. This is to evenly distribute the heat throughout the squash. Now you're going to simply add a bit of water to the tray. And this is to ensure that the squash stays nice and moist and doesn't dry out in the oven. Now the only thing to do is pop it in the oven for 45 minutes. Whilst that's roasting, we're going to make our crust. So grab your mixing bowl and we're going to add 320 grams of oats, 320 grams of white flour, 150 grams of brown sugar and 125 grams of unsalted butter. Once it's all together in the bowl, just gently knead it together. Keep gently kneading until you reach this nice crumbly consistency. With your crumble base finished, take a small tray and line it with greaseproof paper. Then begin to add the mix. We're only going to use about three quarters for the base. At this point, your squash should be ready to come out of the oven. Be careful as you pick up the squash as it'll still be quite hot. Uh, we're looking for a soft, squishy consistency. So now we're going to add 60 grams of unsalted butter and a pinch of salt. Blend it all together until you get a nice, thick consistency. So next we're going to add one tablespoon of cinnamon powder. two tablespoons of maple syrup. So now we're going to add the puree to the tray. Spread it into all the corners. A 
Okay, now we're going to add that crumble mixture that we saved from earlier. Just scatter a little bit on the top and we're going to pop on a few chocolate chips. Now you don't need to use chocolate chips, you can always swap them out for icing sugar with some coconut shavings. Now all we need to do is pop it in the oven for 20 minutes or until all the chocolate has completely melted. Once it's finished cooking, we're going to add a little bit of melted chocolate as a finishing touch. Just drizzle it on. Once you've finished with your chocolate, pop it into the fridge for about two hours till it's cool enough to eat. If you want to try something a little bit different, you could substitute the squash for sweet potatoes or pumpkin. Think of this as a mix between flapjacks and crumbles, so even more traditional fruits could be used. Just experiment with what suits your tastes. For this recipe and much more, go to our website. Don't they just look delicious? Now, speaking of delicious, here we have some mouth-watering vegetables ready to dig up for our dish later. And we need these fresh ingredients for this curry we're about to do. And what better way to get them than in our very own planter? Now, if you've been keeping up with the show, you'll be more than familiar with this. And perhaps you'll have built your own in your garden at home. And as we said before, this is a really cost-effective, easy way to grow your own vegetables. OK, so let's get digging. Uh, if you have a fork or a trowel, that would be great. I'm using a scoop. OK, you just go down, dig down on the left-hand side or right-hand side. I'm, I'm doing left. Straight down to the bottom, towards the roots as far as you can go. And then just tease the earth up just to loosen it. So then it's quite easy to take out without damaging it. You don't want to go too close to the, the leak itself because you don't want to scratch it. Or, and then just leave it to the side. OK, I'm going to take out another one. Straight down to the bottom again to the roots, make sure you're at the bottom and take a, take them out and just shake off any excess soil, soil you've got there. You don't want to take it into the kitchen. <laughs> okay, and then we're going to move on now to the carrots. We don't need this for the carrots, we can just use our hands. Okay, take the leaves at the top, right down to the base, get your fingers there and just pull up. They should just come straight out. That's a nice healthy one. Okay, great. And again, down to the bottom, straight out. These are really easy to take out. And again, okay. <laughs> okay, if, now if you look at this one, it's got a few small black areas on. That's from the carrot fly. Okay, what happens is when they're growing, sometimes the female fly comes down, lays its eggs, they hatch, the larvae eats around, and then when it's big enough, it flies away, and it leaves these marked abrasions. But there's two ways to get rid of this. Uh, one is to build your planter two feet off the ground. The, uh, the carrot fly, they can't hover any higher than this, so they won't get to your carrots. Or you can just take your knife and cut it out if you're not too queasy about that. But that is absolutely fine to eat once you've taken those areas out. OK, well, we'll move on to the uh, broccoli now. We won't be cutting these because these aren't actually ready yet. These are really simple, really simple to harvest. All you need to do is take your knife along the stem there, cut, cut away. And there you have it. It's OK to leave the leaves around it as well, because if you're not going to use it straight away, it protects them. OK, so we'll leave them there, leave them growing. OK, and then we're going to move on to uh, our potatoes. OK, the humble potato. Now, these are a really nice, easy one to dig up as well. Just go in from the side. Don't go down on the top. You're going to damage them. Loosen the earth up. Nice and easy. And just get your hands in there and take them out. Yeah, just loosen the earth up, going from the side, e really easy. Okay, there's um, a really nice, two nice ways to make sure these are, are good to eat and mature. One is if the leaves at the top are withered, it's ready. Also, another one is if you dust it all off, rub the skin. If the skin remains intact, then that's mature as well, and it's ready for consumption. And there you go. Uh, we've harvested all that we need for today's cook. Now, whilst I finish harvesting and preparing these, they, let's join Kath down at the allotments. I think we could do with maybe a, another leak or two. As the winter months start rolling in, there is still plenty of work to be done on the allotments. Ready in time for spring.
So today it's all about the management and preparation of the allotment for springtime. But for now, we're going to talk to local gardener George. This is George. He's been on the allotment site for ooh, 20, 30 years and he's got a fantastic way of preparing his ground ready for all the vegetables. Today he's got some vegetables ready to be pulled out. What have you got, George? So we've got uh, carrots here and uh, parsnips. Uh, these are long carrots. Uh, they're a short variety uh, because at one time I used to do a lot of showing. I don't know. Mm. And these, again, these are short parsnips. Uh -huh. And what type of carrots are they? Uh, they are new red intermediate. They're mm -hmm. a long carrot. Uh, and again, uh, for the seeds, you have to send to specialist growers, right, uh, specialist seed merchant. Uh -huh. Just try this one. This is there we go. Wow. Although that is not, not quite long enough. Well, what's the technique? The technique is uh, I fill that with the very farm seed soil, uh -huh. and then I make an hole with a hammer, uh -huh. and then I fill that hole with a mixture of uh, potash, uh, magnesium, and soil, uh -huh. and then uh, according to form. Uh, Carrots and parsnips they thrive on potash and magnesium. Well, I didn't know that. That's, That's brilliant. That's not really good because it's got to um, a secondary growth there. Right. What else have we got? Again, you can feel down. Sometimes As you can see, yeah, sometimes parsnips are very, very awkward pulling out, but these are not too bad. This man. There's another little parsnip. No, that's not too bad. Once that they're washed and cleaned, you know, they look a, a lot better. And again, it's same medium, same very fine soil. With the potash and magnesium and, potash and that. Yeah. Magnesium, yeah. And then what I'll do, I'll change this soil every year. Yeah. Put fresh soil in, fresh seed soil. I normally grow them in these uh, barrels, but uh, I don't. I find I don't have a lot of success with that. Mm. I'll leave that in the room to you. Although winter is now rolling in and the weather is getting colder, there are still some vegetables that can still be planted at this time of year. Garlic is one of them. Like onions, garlic is sweetened by the frost due to the starches turning to sugar. So now I'm going to show you how I plant garlic. Here the garlic is what I'm going to plant. This is what a, just basically a clove, mammoth or elephant garlic. You plant it with the root end down and that's where the, the shoot comes up afterwards. So you put it in there like that, like so. You can put a little hole there. Just make sure that the tip is just about poking above the ground. The light will help it to grow. And another one, again, the roots grow that way and the shoot grows up there. Just plant it in like that. And have it just so it peeking above the ground. Now what I also do is I cover them at the moment until the roots have actually started to grow. Because otherwise the pigeons will come along and pull them out on you. So I'm putting these in either side. The idea being... You can use a fleece or an old neck curtain, ideal, and you just throw it across the top of the garlic and then the pigeons can't get at it. Once the, the, the garlic has actually taken root, you can take the net off and it can have all the frost it likes. So hopefully, come July, we'll have some really nice big bulbs of garlic. And then I will just brick it all down and that's easy as it is. That's the garlic for you. So as you can see, there's still so much more that can be done over the winter months. This has just been the tip of the iceberg. You can find a whole lot more handy hints and tips on our website, and then you can prepare your garden for winter.
It's important you keep on top of your allotment at this time of year as you want to make sure it's ready in time for next year's planting. In the kitchen with us today, we have Taylor Paisley French, who's going to be helping us make a winter vegetable curry using some of these vegetables. Hello there. How are you doing, pal? You all right? Oh, it's good to see you. Good, good to see you see. too. Uh, are you ready to cook with us and dig for dinner? Yeah, Excellent. absolutely. Right, uh, we've got some vegetables there that are a bit pre-prepared for you. Okay, so okay. it takes half the work. Are you okay to chop them up for us? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, we're going to get straight into this winter vegetable curry because I'm sure everyone's going to love it. Okay, um, so straight away, I want to get the oil in, in there, turn this on. And the first thing I'm going to do is heat up some of the, the curry spices here. You smell these? That smells wicked. <laughs> it's gorgeous, gorgeous. It actually these, smells wonderful. Yeah, yeah, these are great on vegetable kebabs, on sweet potatoes in the oven. Absolutely stunning. I'll tell you what's in this later. Okay. I can imagine it goes well with beans as well. Beans, oh. Yeah, beans on toast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Spicy beans. And it just. Okay, so let that, let that go. Um, then we're going to add some onions. I'm going to want to get these browned off. So get these straight in first. Okay, and let, it might smoke a little bit, but as soon as it starts smoking, I'll put some stock. Okay, let that stir away, and okay, now we've got to start off the rice. Okay, get this all going at the same time. Oop. Okay, I haven't touched anything, so <laughs> I'm going to sanitize my hands, because <laughs> I've been in the planter. There you go. Okay, and okay, so over here we've got uh, rice in the slow cooker. Okay, and we're going to add a little bit of saffron and turmeric to it, just to, to season it all up. Turmeric's okay. a great shout. Yes. Same yeah. with saffron. Yeah. Pretty much essential for rice, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Especially with this. Okay, let me just use this little tiny bit to go in. Okay. Give that a bit of a stir. Okay. And now I'm going to add all some of these pre-cut vegetables here, add these in after I've added a little bit of stock because it's smoking away now, they're browning beautifully. Okay. Okay, so we've got the spices, we've got the onions, we're gonna add some butternut squash. Not too much. Um, ah, lovely potatoes as well smelling gorgeous okay and how do you like your food this has already got chili in it this curry curry powder how do you like your food do you like it hot yeah personally i like quite a bit of spice <laughs> okay so shall we add some more chili into it why not spice okay. is nice <laughs> get it in there okay it might be a, a hot dish this one yeah it's up to you how much uh, chili you want to put in there as an extra okay okay and just to let you know, in this beautiful curry powder that we prepared, uh, it's got fenugreek, fenugreek uh, cardamom pods, uh, fennel seeds, uh, salt and pepper, and dried off garlic as well. Okay, but it's absolutely gorgeous. And we just dry that off in a heated pan to begin with. I think we're in for a treat, aren't we? Oh, it's going to be absolutely gorgeous, <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. So now I've got them going. I'll leave it to simmer and wait for all your chopped up veg. Can you tell us... A little bit about yourself. We only already know you're a fantastic musician. Well, I like to, yeah. I like to play a bit of music myself. I've been doing it for quite a while <laughs> just now. A little bit. Yeah, just just a little bit, just a little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, you know how it goes. It starts out as a hobby, Sorry, and man. then, you know, everything just uh, everything merges into one. You, you you have to choose your way in life, and uh, yeah. fortunately for me, I chose music. You know, um, from quite an early age. I was about uh, nine or nine or ten when I probably started up with like. Just, just playing, playing an instrument. Um, didn't take it very seriously, obviously at that point. Yeah. I was only young, but um, later on, as the years went by, I started going to college. Uh, did a bit of music, GCSE, BTEC, and you know, I thought this is what I really want. You know, this is what makes me happy. So, you know, you got to do what makes you happy, ain't you? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, totally, totally. You know? So, so what you're about nine, ten when you started? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just a friend of mine across the road. They, um, they showed me how to play a. Uh, a song, uh, I think it's Heart and Soul from uh, the movie Big. You remember Tom Hanks? Yep, yep. And he was yep. uh, playing that giant piano Love, with his yeah, feet. Yeah, the piano, everyone knows it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, everybody knows yeah, it. Yeah. Everybody knows it. So. Yeah, I, I tried to learn that. I think I got, uh, yeah, 
not about 10 seconds into it. Ten <laughs> yeah. That's where my musical career stopped. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, it was one of those, you know, obviously, like, for me, it took, took quite a few years before I actually started, like, um, playing anything else because I, I developed um, learning by ear. You see, uh, so I, I never really took like music like lessons the or anything like, like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you know, it was it was great. It was um it was always great fun, and my mum would you know uh, challenge me to to learn in different songs like Happy Ending by Mika or, or Don't Matter by Akon, you know, and I I just had two fingers yeah. and just you know yeah. play around, <laughs> and then um and then yeah, so yeah, I was about sixteen, saw saw some people playing jazz and things like that at college, and then what do you know? There was me getting jealous and things like that <laughs> and I was like oh I have to learn I have to learn so that's exactly what I did I um I started listening to a lot more jazz you know like Miles Davis and uh, Dave Brubeck and things like that and yeah. um you know as a part of college we started deciphering um scores and notation and things like that and then uh you know I just I was uh I ran two bands back then as well okay. um, so uh, Pure Substance and Halcyon were the two bands and um, we played with a 2011 uh, Britain's Got Talent winner, Jai McDowell. Um, and then we uh, went to World Skills UK, a national competition, uh, as a part of the college. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, we, we did quite a bit, to be honest. We, um, yeah, we was pretty good. But then um, I went to uh, Ed Shield University. Yep, yep. So um, from there, I decided, you know, I'll take it as a solo sort of thing. Um, because the only person you can rely on is yourself half the time, isn't it? So, you know, yeah, you know, I completely agree with that. Yeah. If you need a, if your drummer needs like a dinner reservation to, to go to or something like that, you kind of, you know, so if you're doing it on your own, if you, <laughs> you can't, you can't go to a gig and a dinner reservation mm -hmm. at the same time, unless your gig is your dinner reservation. Yeah. Wouldn't that be something, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's but smelling lovely, that. It's yeah. yeah, it smells af Yeah, it's getting there. It's, I think it's about halfway done now. Um, mm. yeah, where can uh, any of us come and see you? You can see me, um, well, you know, uh, on my Twitter and, and Facebook pages and stuff like that, you know, um, I'll always like set out where I'm going to be. Mm -hmm. So um, most likely, I, I'm a regular down at the uh, Milo & Co in Ormskirk. Okay. Um, yep. It's a really nice cocktail lounge, really friendly yep. um, staff there. And it's just a nice, really chilled out environment. And it's good with the students, you know, they have like- So if really we go on your Twitter, like if we, we Google you, you'll find out your events, what you're doing? Yeah, yeah. Okay, super, super. Okay. It's wicked. Yeah, <laughs> uh, have you done anything high profile recently? Have you got any? Yeah, yeah, I went to, um, this summer, I, I got an offer to go to uh, do an interview with BBC Lancashire. Very good. So that Very was great, good. you know, yeah. a part of the introducing, so. You're not doing too bad when the BBC ring you up. Yeah. yeah. Say, Excuse oh, me, well. yeah. <laughs> you, you know. doing anything? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, nothing, not you know. Yeah. <laughs> Just chilling on my sofa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, so that was great. I went to Blackburn for that, and then um, they offered me to come back for uh, the 10th anniversary. So uh, that was great as well. You know, I went back and did a live performance, two live performances in, uh, in a morning session, daytime session. Um, so yeah, you know, things have been going well, and they've, uh, they've offered me to come back in December, um, December the 21st. Okay, uh, yeah. So it'll be like in so the So you'll morning. be on the radio on the 21st of December? Yep, on BBC Lancashire, BBC Radio There you go, so yeah. Tune in, to <laughs> tune in then if you're not up. I'm can, you, can you catch you on your Twitter? I, yeah. I assume that you can, there's a night. It's, what do they call it now? I, I don't know. But it's yeah, like you can you'll, tweet you'll be on there. You'll yeah, have to download it like later that, on yeah. the day or stream it later on Yeah, you day. can stream online and things like that, you know. Um, Otherwise, just catch it live, you know, but it is pretty early. No one wants to yeah. be up at ungodly hours. Well, so. you might be driving to work. <laughs> yeah. so, well, you yeah. know. <laughs> so you've got a, a new EP coming out. I do indeed, which yeah. Which is quite exciting. Yeah, I've been working on it for about a year and a half to two years now. Um, uh, it's going to be a five-song EP. I didn't want to make an album as a first sort of thing, you know, mm -hmm. so, um, yeah, five songs is just good enough for me. Um, you know, I've been, been working on them for ages. Um, the reason why it's taken so long is because... You know, I, I want it to be perfect. I want to be proud yeah, of it, you know? Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm taking my time. I, uh, I've recorded um, at Edge Hill University's uh, studios, and um, I recorded a song in Pass Street studi Studios with uh, Chris Taylor yeah. as well. Um, Pass Street is a great studio. Uh, Coldplay recorded their first three albums there. Black Sabbath have recorded there. And now, yeah. You know? and, now and I hit a song there, yeah. It was, <laughs> it was great okay. stuff. It was played on a Mersey, Merseyside um, radio station as well, so. That was pretty cool, and BBC Radio Lancashire as well. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's going pretty well, you know. Excellent. Well, uh, this is looking nearly ready, so I'm just going to add some coconut milk to it, just thicken okay. it all up, and okay. take away the heat as well. Uh, we'll just leave, leave that there, though, to, to simmer for a wee bit. But yeah, um, so what can people expect from your EP? Is there any styles or any artists that have inspired you in any of the songs, or 
Are you you? Are you completely unique? <laughs> yeah, well, I'd, I'd like to think think I'm pretty unique, but you know, um, yeah. Uh, obviously, ev everyone has an influence or an inspiration, yeah. and um, you know, I, I have a lot of like uh, uh, jazz influences in in piano playing, um, and then lyrical content. I, I try to write from different perspectives. You know, um, something that people can relate to. Uh, other than love, I still write about loss and you know loss of love because you know you, you, there's got to be at least one song. But you know yeah. um, things like hypocrisy, you know, and uh, people who annoy you and things like that. You know, mm. uh, th these are the sort of songs that you don't exactly hear all the time. And you know, um, people relate to songs, you know, th and that's that's why I've been writing like that. So I want it. I want it to be a pretty diverse album. You know, um, it's, it's not all just going to be like all really slow or really really hyped up and things like that. Um, it's pretty diverse, there's, there's differences in the songs, you know, they all have their own, uh, they're not like filler songs, you know, mm. so they all okay. have their well, own importance of the album. This is nearly ready, would you mind um, yeah. serving up some rice in there for um, us? Grab a spoon as well. Yeah, yeah, of course. Thank you, cheers. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, it smells I mean, lovely, that. Yeah, which artists have inspired you the most, do you think? Um, like if you could, in your, uh, it's not CD collection anymore, is it, in your... <laughs> no, well... Um, your iPod, what have you got? <laughs> yeah, on the Spotify and all Spotify, that. Spotify, yeah. Yeah, um, I'd say like a lot of Stevie Wonder, um, even down to Katie Tunstall, Foo Fighters, you know, th these are the sort of artists that I listen to a lot, um, mainly down to their like, their their musical creativity and their um, lyrical influences as well. Like, um, you can tell that they spend a lot of time mm. doing what they're doing, especially Stevie Wonder. Oh, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a... Uh, I, lo I love to listen to these sort of people, you know, they're, they're a massive inspiration for me. Okay, well I'm going to try this just before we, we serve this up. Uh, I don't know if you want to have a little try as well? Yeah, I'll go for it. Oh, lovely, but... Oh, it's got a kick to it, those yeah, extra chilies. Yeah, I imagine so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but yeah, I think it's ready to go. What do you think? Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah, okay. Oh yeah, I remember that kick. It's got that yeah. kick at the end. Definitely. I'll turn this off there. Okay. So, we'll just take that out there. Okay, that is looking beautiful. Okay, I'll leave a little bit in, in the pan there. Leave a little bit. That's, a, that's a healthy okay, dinner, well, that, isn't it? Yeah, well, thank you very much for helping us in Digford Dinner Kitchen. Hey, it's been an absolute pleasure. So, let's uh, take it out to sure. let Kath enjoy it as well. All okay. right, wonderful. Great. Hey there, Kath. Hey, hey, hey there. Hi there. Hi. How'd you do? You got a treat for you. It's lovely, Taylor. Look, we've got a lovely, healthy swimming pool oh, here for you. Oh, wow. So butternut <laughs> squash crumbles, and there you go. Please oh, dig in. Oh, it smells delicious. Yeah, definitely give it a go. It's wonderful. My word. Lovely okay, lovely. butternut wonderful squash crumble too. bars and winter vegetable curry. You two like delicious oh. recipes for you to try at home. All of the information from today's show, including some exclusive content from Taylor, can be found on our website. From all of us here at Dig for Dinner, see you next time.